This video looks at independent model GPC. So far, this chapter focused mostly on GPC based on Karima models, but we've looked briefly now at state space models and DMC, which are equivalent to GPC with the step response model. However, one widely used alternative in the literature is what's called an independent model. Independent models have the advantage of having the same sensitivity irrespective of whether the model is state space or transfer function or step response or something else. And in simple terms, what you're doing is you're basing your predictions primarily on input information with minimal use of measured outputs to form the predictions. So that's what independent models share in common. They focus their predictions primarily on input information. Here's a typical independent model structure then. What you'll notice is we have a real process and you have an input going into that real process. And what we do is in parallel with the real process, we run a simulation of a system model. And that gives us a model output. So whenever we get an input, we always put it into the real process and into the model. However, obviously, the model is not offset term. What we do is we measure the real output by measuring the real process, compare it to the model output, and that gives us this offset term, which tells us the difference between the two. Predictions now are going to be based upon solely the model. We've got an input going into the model, we've got an output coming out of the model, and we're going to use these two values to form the predictions and then use this offset term to give ourselves a correction. Now that was discussed briefly in video 10 of chapter 1. A common tool to ensure unbiased predictions is the use of a disturbance estimate or an offset term D. This term captures both the actual system disturbance but it will also cater for any errors in the parameters. This is a reminder then of what we did in the first chapter. In essence therefore the future predictions for the process output are given by model predictions, so that's what that term, term there, model predictions, plus some offset term, where the offset is defined by what we've got here, a process output minus the model output, and that gives us the offset term. And we have the predictions using the model alone, and the predictions using the model and the offset term. Now, we did cover that in Chapter 1, but that's basically the concept that will be used with independent models. The underlying model could be transfer function, or it could be state space, or it could indeed be any form you like. If it was transfer function then, I would have a model prediction, which is the bit I've just put in the red box there, and you'll say, yeah, that looks just like the Karima model predictions I did earlier in this chapter. But I add to it this correction term, this offset term. Similarly, I could do state space predictions and I could say if I had a state space model and I just take my model with the state x and the future input u, those are the predictions I get and then you'll see I've added to it the offset term. Substituting these predictions into a simple performance index, you're going to get the following sort of steps. So I'm going to do this very quickly because this replicates what's done at the beginning of this chapter and you don't want me to dwell on the algebra. So I take my predictions there they are. I substitute them into my performance index, and that gives me what's in this yellow box here. I then do a minimization with respect to the future control increments, and the control law comes out like this at the bottom. And you'll notice the only difference between this and GPC is this additional term at the end, which is the offset term. If I expand it out, so I use all the um, same algebra that we used in the earlier videos on predictive control. So again, I won't dwell on it. You'll find you can get a compact form, as we've given here, a standard compact form. Again, the difference is I've got an extra term here at the end multiplying on this offset term. And I can define what those parameters are if I need to. Please do pause the video if you need to look at this algebra more slowly. If I now put it into transfer function form, which you'll see is the same as we did in video 2.3, you'll find I get the same denominator, the same feedforward, the same numerator as I got in those videos. But the difference is 
I get an extra term here on the end, which comes from the offset. Let's look then at how I would implement this if I wanted a block diagram equivalent. Well, your pre-filter, we feed forward from the target, is the same as before. The model output goes through NK, same as before, but the difference is that what's going through NK is the model output, not the process output. And hopefully you can see that down here. The denominator of the controller is the same, goes in the same position, comes out of this summing junction, so it all looks the same. Now the difference is that we're going to get some action based upon this offset, and therefore you get this MK term over here. And that's the main difference. The NK is based upon the model output, and in order to cater that, we have this additional MK term down here. So there's an equivalent block diagram, just in case you need it. If I do some MATLAB code then to compare independent model GPC with normal GPC, and you'll notice a comment here that independent model GPC gives equivalent noise rejection to DMC. And what do you notice? You can see that the noise rejection from independent model is much better. It's less sensitive to measurement noise than Karima based GPC. So in other words, when you have an independent model, you might say, well, I don't need a T filter because I've got good noise rejection already. Let's go to MATLAB and see some of this code in case you want to look at it yourself. Here's the code then, video2 underscore 12 example 1. First I enter my system, I enter my prediction parameters and things like that, I enter my set point disturbance and noise, and then you'll see there's this file imgpc underscore tf, so it's a transfer function independent model, simulate no constraints. So I can run that. And there's your responses. Now at the moment I've got no noise. I've just done a set point tracking and a disturbance rejection. You might want to say, okay, let's compare this with what I get if I do a standard GPC. So that's what's lower down on this code. Now I'm going to run the first four lines and these include some noise. But then what I'm going to do is point to you to this warning. It says the next file is in a different folder. So what I've done is I've organized things into different folders. There's a folder for independent model MPC and there's a separate folder for GPC. So I'm going to move to the GPC folder in order to run this next file. And then I'm going to go back again. Now obviously you can do add paths and things as you wish um, with these, but I've not done that to keep life simpler. Now I can overlay the plots. And there you go. There's the plots that you saw in the original presentation. So comparing GPC with independent model GPC. If you were to do disturbance rejection, what you would notice is that GPC gives better disturbance rejection than this independent model. And that replicates what we saw with the T filter. You don't get anything for nothing. If you improve sensitivity in one frequency range, well, it may well get worse in a different frequency range. What about if I want to do independent model GPC with state space models or state space predictions? What I've said is you could write the state space predictions using something like this. And you'll notice I haven't used deviation variables now, I've just used absolute variables, and I've used this offset term to make sure that I'm unbiased. What I can do now is I can substitute that into performance index, something like this. Now, in order to do this, I still need to estimate the steady state input. So what I'm going to do is say, I've got a model, and my model output is given by GSS USS. And my predicted output, I've got to add this offset term. So if I want to get a prediction which matches the target, then this is the equation I'm going to get. The GSS USS plus D equals the target value. And therefore, that tells me what an estimate of the required steady state value of the input should be. It's R minus D over GSS, where D is this offset term. 
Now, because we're doing state-space models, there are some subtle differences depending on the performance index you're going to use. And because I've used, I've decided to use future values of the input rather than future increments as my degree of freedom, there's a subtlety in how I set the rest of the uh, vector up. And what I've done is I've said after n new steps, I'm going to assume that the input goes to a constant value, but I've not said what that constant value should be. I'm allowing that constant value to be a degree of freedom. And therefore, your h times u future, which you can split as h1, h2, is going to become h1, h2l, and you'll see the u future splits into the immediate values in the future, and then what's the steady state going to be? Now, for compactness, I'm going to write this as h u future, but you need to recognize as a user, how is this h defined? And you can see the definition is here. And how is this U future defined? And you see the definition is here. And the other subtlety here is you must note the steady state value of the input within my predictions does not need to match the steady state value that would give me zero tracking error. Because at this moment in time, the US is a degree of freedom I'm going to use to optimize my performance. If I substitute these predictions in, so there's my prediction equation as before. The key thing is we've just said, be careful how we define the H and the U future. And I've made some arbitrary decisions of how I'm going to choose it here. Now all the steps are as before. I have my predicted tracking errors. I have my predicted differences between U and the steady state of U that I want to get zero tracking. So that's why it's got USS in there. If I go through all the algebra, which I'm not going to do, you can pause the video if you really want to. You'll find the optimum input is given by this expression here. And you'll see it multiplies on the future targets, as you expect, the current state. And that state is the state of the model. You've got your offset term and you've got your estimate for the steady state value of the input to give me no tracking errors. Now that's quite messy because if you write it out, you say, golly, I've got four terms here. Look, all these four terms. Can I simplify that a bit? Well, you can if you want to. You don't have to. If you're writing code, you could just get the D, you could get the USS and just write it out like that. But given we know USS has this form, it's R minus D over G GSS, then obviously this term here can be absorbed into this term and this term, and that may, might like, make things just a bit more compact. So that's what I'm going to do. A little bit of algebra, which again, you can pause the video if you want to see it a bit more slowly, and you'll see I can combine to get a term here, which multiplies on R, and a term here, which multiplies on DK. And interestingly, you'll notice that these two terms are the same. I've assumed here that R K plus one equals r k plus 2 and so on in order to do this. And when you do that, you find your control law reduces to this nice easy form at the bottom. Some constant times r minus d minus <coughs> a state feedback. But critically, this x is the model state, not the real process state. And the model state is easy to access. Now, the code to do this is provided for you, but just a warning, because we've made a different choice of performance index for this particular example, we're not going to get the same responses as you would get if you'd used a different performance index. You can write your own code if you want to use the same performance index as the Karima GPC. The code then is given here, video 212, example 2. So let's have a look at that. Here's the code then, and what you'll notice is it defines a state space matrix, it puts some weightings and some horizons, gives an initial state, defines a reference, a disturbance and a noise, and then at the end you'll see there's this model, independent model, GPC, and then it says state space, simulate no constraints. You can of course unpack that model, and if you want to look and see how it works, a key thing you might notice is within the simulation loop, it's got simulate your model, and I've used subscript M for model, and simulate the process, or I've used subscript P for the process. And you do need to include within your control law is in fact this simulation of the model, because you have to update the model states.
Let's run the file then. And what the file will do is this particular one is showing tracking performance, disturbance rejection and noise rejection all in the same figure. But clearly that definition is based here and you can change that to suit your own needs. In summary then, independent model GPC uses predictions based solely on the model's inputs and outputs and then it corrects with an offset term to ensure you have unbiased predictions. By doing this, you're desensitizing the predictions to measurement noise because, in essence, your predictions are mostly based on past inputs. But you might be worse at rejecting disturbances because you've got less output information in the predictions and the output information might be what allows you to pick up disturbances more quickly. The coding is almost identical to DPC using the same model format, but the only difference is how the control action also depends on the measured offset. So you'll notice the control law had an extra term down here. Some remarks. It can be shown that Karima-based independent model GPC is equivalent to DMC as both base predictions solely on past inputs and a linear model using the offset to correct for any bias. However, independent model GPC is easier than DMC because predicting with transfer functional states based models is quicker and easier. It's more compact. Basically, you need fewer parameters. You can also do IM GPC using states based models, and in this case, you don't need an observer. And you might say, great, don't need an observer. That makes life much easier. But do remember the fact that you have a simulation of the independent model embedded within your control law suggests the independent model is in, in essence acting like an observer. <laughs>